Hello, uh, welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley, and uh, for the next hour, we're going to be looking at punctuation. Uh, okay, um, punctuation, of course, not so important when you're speaking, but vitally important for writing. Um, okay, uh, we're going to do as much as we can today, frankly. As soon as somebody can join me in here in the class, we're going to get started because there's a lot to talk about regarding punctuation. And we're going to look at the basic rules. And please, I encourage anyone who would like to join me to uh, ask any questions that come to your mind. Uh, okay. Punctuation. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to wait. For anyone to join me, <laughs> I'm going to start. Uh, okay. All right, you're talking about punctuation here. Oh, okay. <coughs> Someone has joined me. Uh, Francisco, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. And you? I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Francisco, uh, we're going to look at punctuation. Okay, so, uh, which is very important in writing, so let's get started. Uh, okay, punctuation rules, let's start with the period. Okay, not a point, not a dot. I've heard second language speakers call it those things, uh, but uh, a period. At the end of the sentence, there's one now at the end of the sentence. Uh, I enjoyed the movie, period. Okay. Also, we use a period after an initial. Initials are the first letter of our name. For example, M. E. Kerr is a wonderful author. After the M, after the E. Uh, okay, as well. Um, Initials can represent, uh, for example, U, S, A. All right. Technically speaking, of course, we should use uh, periods after the initials in, for example, USA. Of course, you've probably seen it written like this many, many times. But uh, really, technically speaking, this is more correct. This is correct. Uh, welcome back, Francisco, and, uh, hello, Vu. Hello, teacher. Hi. Uh, How welcome. I'm doing okay. Uh, we're looking at, uh, punctuation rules here. Uh, we're talking about periods, all right? End of sentence, uh, after an initial, and, uh, rule number three uh, use a period uh, after an abbreviation. So, for example, Mrs. Simmons. Uh, and the abbreviation, um, street, uh, what is this one? Francisco? What is this abbreviation uh, for? <laughs> Doctor, no? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh. All right, that was too easy. Uh, Vu, what's this one? Whoops. I don't know, teacher. Ah, do you know, Francisco? Uh, dears, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually don't know exactly what it is. I always think of it as doctor of dentistry, but it means dentist. Uh, uh, dentist. I'm not exactly sure. Dentistry doctor? <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. Okay, anyway, the idea is after abbreviations, we have a period. Periation, uh, periods can be used as a decimal point. All right, this is the, in math, you can call it a point. The workers received a 2.1% raise, and you actually pronounce it, you actually speak to point one. Uh, 
All right. Okay. Next rule. Use a period to separate dollars and cents. Okay. Uh, who? Can you read this for me? Four points ninety-five dollar. Yeah. Read the whole sentence, please. The bo the book costs four point ninety-five dollar. Okay. First of all, okay. There's actually the. There's something very wrong here. Hmm? Um, okay, first of all, all right, let's let's look at four. Okay, we pronounce this. We speak this four dollars and ninety-five cents. Or um, uh, I might just say four ninety-five and not actually include dollars. If it is completely obvious, I would only say the book costs. 495 if it is very obvious that the book is not going to cost $495 uh, if it's obvious it's going to be $4.95 I may not even use uh, dollars I may not say the word dollars for this symbol I may not say uh, I may not say cents so I may not indicate any um, period or point in between we Okay, so one more time, four dollars and ninety-five cents. Four dollars and ninety-five cents. All right, very good. Now, the other thing is, I just realized uh, there is a grammatical error here. Um, do you, either one of you guys see the problem with this sentence? There is a problem here. No. Uh, uh, the price. The price. It's too much. It's too little. Uh, no. Uh, here it is. Okay. The uh, dog. If this said the dog swim. No, oh, wait a minute. The dog swim? No, the dog swims. The book costs. There should be an S here. This isn't hasn't been conjugated properly. Uh, is the third person. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It's an it. It costs. That's exactly correct. All right. Uh, let's move on with the periods here. Use a period after each number in a list printed vertically. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For example, these numbers uh, over here on the side. Uh, six. Uh, five. Six. Six. Period. Okay, so when you're listing, you use periods for the, each number. Okay, so much for periods. Let's move on to more exciting punctuation. Woo! <laughs> exclamation point. All right, you use an exclamation point at the end of a sentence, phrase, or word to indicate a strong emotion. This is annoying. Do not do this. Uh... This is annoying, and actually, it's semi-rude, okay? Um, so unless you're talking to your brother or sister, your best friend, and you don't care if you annoy them, please do not use multiple uh, question mark. I mean, sorry, exclamation points, or question marks, as a matter of fact. Slip of the tongue, but that's true as well. Um, another major faux pas, uh, a major mistake that frequently people make. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, whoops. Uh, although it has nothing to do with punctuation. Uh, please don't do this. Okay, please do not capitalize all your letters. Um, even though you're writing this is considered to be the equivalent of screaming. Uh, so no more than you would speak to someone and you would scream at them at the top of your lungs. You would certainly not do that, have a normal conversation with someone and scream at the top of your lungs. You also uh, should not write in all capital letters. That's basically considered quite rude. 
So please don't do that. All right, multiple exclamation points. Don't do it. This is okay. Wow. One word. Uh, this is common. Wow. I never thought mom would let us go to the concert. Hooray. Okay. Uh, this is just not okay. Multiple question marks. Multiple uh, exclamation points. Um, as a general rule, if you're writing... Okay, uh, let me just say this about exclamation points. They are very useful if you're writing a text message to your mom. Pick me up! Uh, or if you're writing something informal. Or if you're including dialogue, you are writing what people are saying, then uh, exclamation points are extremely helpful to convey that the speakers are being uh, very emotional or excited when they talk. Very helpful. However, uh, for business writing, for academic writing, for writing in an IELTS or TOEFL or TOEIC or CAE exam, don't use exclamation points. I don't ever want to see exclamation points in a business document or in a business email. Um, I do not want to see exclamation points in an academic essay. That is really not acceptable. Um, there's nothing to be excited about. Business is supposed to be unemotional. <laughs> so using exclamation points makes you seem um, highly unprofessional. Oh, okay, let's move on. Question marks. Um, Francisco, why would I use a question mark? <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Oh, well, okay. You'd use it at the end of the question, obviously. Okay. Did Stephen go with you? Um, when we're writing, we are going... We. It's not a question <laughs> unless you put a question mark uh, as far as writing. Ah, um, uh, yes. I understand. Right. Uh, if I change that to a period, is this even a sentence? Vu? No, I think uh, it's not work. Yeah, it doesn't even, it's not really even a sentence. Uh, unless, um, unless possibly it was in quotations. Uh, did Stephen go with you? Uh, in, in the right context, but pretty much, basically, uh, if this does not have a question mark, it's not even a, really a sentence anymore. Uh, it, it doesn't actually make any sense because of the way the sentence is formed. Uh, we also use a question mark at the end of a declar declarative statement. You declare something. A statement. Don't worry too much about this adjective, declarative. You make a declaration, you make a statement you believe to be true uh, that you want to emphasize as not believing. So, okay, she's our new teacher. So in speaking, actually try this. Francisco, how would you express this? How would you say it? Uh, she is our new teacher. Yeah, I'm not very happy about that. Vu, how would you say that? This sentence. Uh, she, she is our new teacher, isn't she? Uh, no, well, you don't have to add anything. You can just say this statement. I, I'm what I'm looking for is actually the intonation. Oh, okay. intonation. Yeah. You would not say she's our new teacher. That doesn't sound like a question. Furthermore, is she? Further, no, no, no. The structure is. This is perfectly grammatically okay. You don't have to add <laughs> words or subtract words or do anything. All right, it's yes. fine. What you guys are both doing wrong. You're you're saying this like she's our new teacher. Can, can I try again? 
That's not what it is. You have to understand that it would be, it would sound like this. She's our new teacher? What the hell? <laughs> All right? It, it is totally unbelief. The person is surprised, shocked, and doesn't believe the information which they are speaking. So it would have a very dramatic intonation. And um, it would actually, it, just reading it um, should, with the question mark, because this isn't in a question form, this should express to you the idea that the person saying this um, is extremely shocked, uh, annoyed, in disbelief. They're in a, an extreme emotional state. Okay? She's our new teacher? Uh, no way. It can't be. All right. Uh, so the intonation is going to be quite specific here. And, and there is the intonation conveys meaning, or, but just seeing that, in fact, this is a statement with a question mark. Okay. It is obvious that the, whoever says this really can't believe the information. All right. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. We oh, here's another interesting use. All right. Use a question mark with parentheses. All right. These marks on the each side of the question mark here in the example. These are called parentheses. Uh, to indicate that you are not sure of a spelling or other fact, you're unsure. Often for spelling, sometimes you may see this as well. Uh, okay, if you're not sure of the spelling, or possibly like this. Meaning, I don't, I'm not sure about the spelling. Uh, after the word. So see this word here, you can see that Microsoft Word Documents has underlined it in red because they have a problem and that's not the correct spelling. Alright. So, uh, I have to visit an orthopedic doctor. It's, it's wrong spelling. It's actually should be like this. Right, but as an example, I'll leave it there. Uh, what is an orthopedic doctor, Francisco? Do you know? Uh, okay. Vu, do you know what an orthopedic doctor is? Uh, I think uh, you can uh, can correct the the lab. The, the correct uh, the body for uh, people. Correct the body. Correct the legs. Six <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Fixed> bones. <laughs> yes. Not quite. Francisco, what's that? Fix burns. 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 Yes. I think uh, it's a foot doctor. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> now I question myself, but I believe uh, PEDIA, pedometer, pedestrian, okay, this uh, PED has to do, is really Latin for foot. I believe it's a foot doctor, pretty sure. Okay, anyway. All right, we can use this notation. Um, now, you wouldn't want to do this, for example, in an essay or a business letter you would look up the word, frankly, instead of just putting a question mark. If you're quickly texting somebody or you're sending someone a quick instant message on Skype or something, then yes, and you, and you don't have time or resources to look up the word, then this is an acceptable uh, use. Quotation marks and parentheses is okay. But for any kind of formal writing, please just look up the word. Get yourself a dictionary. It's really not acceptable. All right, next. Comma, 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 come here and on. All right, use a comma after each item in a series of at least three items. Listing things. Um, 
All right, now, okay, this is important. Please note, it has become acceptable. I like that. It's kind of a new grammar rule to omit the comma before the conjunction in a series. Um, but it has become acceptable to do this. But on the other hand, if you put the comma there all the time, then you can never be wrong. Um, it's possible to confuse yourself if you want to use the comma or not use the comma. My advice, simply always use a comma and then you're never wrong. Um, okay, here's an example. Um, I still need to take a test, comma. All right. Uh, write an essay, comma. And check out a book, all right. Uh, perfectly fine. Uh, as it's showing in the next example, I dislike. Okay, I'm listing phrases. I'm listing actions. Okay, I use commas to separate the different phrases. I can list words. I dislike spinach, broccoli, and cauliflower. Fine. Um, I separate each item with a comma. This is acceptable. I dislike spinach, comma, broccoli, and cauliflower. This is okay to do this, frankly, most of the time. But to be honest, there are certain circumstances where you can't do this. So my advice to you guys is to always put the comma. That You can never be wrong if you put the comma. You can sometimes be wrong if you don't put the comma. All right. So, listing things. Uh, okay. Next use. Use commas after the street address and city in an address. Uh, do not use a comma after the state. Now, this is interesting. Uh, try this out here. Francisco. Can you try uh, reading this address? Uh. The, uh, the address is 1234 Apple Street, Midton, Kansas, 98765. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no problem. All right. Very good. The address is uh, 1234. That's fine. Uh, actually, Vu, I, can you do the same thing? Can you read this for me? The address is uh, one two three four Apple Street, Lake Town, Kansas nine eight seven six five. Okay. You guys both did it the same way, uh, and there's no problem with the way you guys read this address. That was very good. With the pausing, all right, where you see a comma. All right, just like in regular speaking, you're going to pause as you're, uh, whenever you see a comma. Like if you're reading a sentence with a comma, you're naturally going to pause. Also, when you're giving an address where a comma would be, if it was written, also you need to pause. Um, okay, 98765. Francisco said 98765. That's okay. No problem. And the first, uh, the street address, 1234, because it's 1234, that's very natural. But in um, other circumstances with different numbers, you might separate the two numbers. You might say 1234. 1234 is obviously a sequence, so it's very easy to say. But if it's 3268, for example, you, you can say 3268, but you might hear 3268. You would never hear 3268 Apple Street. Never, 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 never. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, use a comma after the day and the year in a date. All right, so when you give dates. Um... 
Okay, I'm not even sure what MLA style is, but there's an example here. Uh, example, Connie's birthday is February 20th, comma, 1965. Uh, okay, Connie's birthday is 20 February 1965. Hmm. Uh, okay, this is very American to say the month first and then the date. And that's how Americans speak it. We say the month first. My birthday is November 6th. Never mind when I was born. <laughs> uh, okay, so after after the date, as in the example here. Okay, uh, also commas are used in large numbers. A comma is needed after every three digits, unlike reading, um, which goes from right to left. Um, moving actually from left to right, uh, the comma is placed after every three digits. Uh, this does not apply to years. We never use commas when we dig in when we give years. Uh, no commas are ever used for years. By the way, it doesn't matter how old you live. If you live to the year um, twenty three thousand and four then that's how it would be written. There would never <laughs> would never be a comma. Uh, okay, I would also like to hear how you read this. Vu, can you read this sentence for me? Vu? Are you there? Okay. I guess not. Uh, Francisco? Yes. Uh, okay. Ooh, uh, Vu, are you there? Okay, I'm completely unsure <laughs> if you were correct or not. You're breaking up a little. Your um, your connection. I, I can hear. Sounds like your tunnel with cell phone. Uh, so I'm not hearing everything you say. But all right. Uh, in 1998, the population of Claremont was 23,899. Uh, okay, twenty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-nine. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, how would I say this number here, uh, Francisco? Francisco, are you there? Okay, Vu, back to you. Uh, how would I express this number? 2,300. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, a very, another extremely common way to express this in English is 2,300. Okay, we don't do that in any other set of numbers in thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions or billions. Only... Uh, only with thousands and hundreds. Uh, and we would never say, for example, 2,345. We wouldn't do that. We'd say 2,345. And that, yes, there should be a comma, which is the main point here. There does need to be a comma every three digits. Okay. Obviously, the main use of a comma is to set off an interruption in the main thought of a sentence. Extra information. Rosa, of course, will bring her folding chairs. Notice the way I read this. You can hear uh, a dramatic change in my intonation to indicate that this is extra information. And also, there is pa there are pauses 
in my rhythm to indicate where the commas are. Rosa, of course, will bring her folding chairs. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, next rule, use a comma to separate two or more adjectives that equally modify the same noun. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, here is a clue for you. If you aren't sure whether to use a comma to separate the adjectives or not, say the word with, say the sentence with the word and in, in place of the comma. If it makes sense, then use the comma. Uh, okay, for example, Jill was having problems with the unruly and disruptive children. Okay, it makes sense for me to use and, which means I should have a comma. Uh, let's try this out. Uh, Heidi, hello. Welcome to the class. Hello. Nice to see you again. <laughs> I'm taking the private class of the Italian teacher. <laughs> this um, <laughs> covering. Then I was waiting for, for that lesson. And just before. Then I checked. It's two days late. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oops. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Well. I didn't have this lesson from the past. <laughs> well, this is a nearly private. This is a semi-private class. Just you and Boo. Uh. Uh. Okay. Let, let's try this out now. We're we're doing we're looking at punctuation rules right now. We're looking. We're in the middle here. We're looking at commas. Uh. All right. This is a little bit tricky. Use a comma to separate two or more adjectives that equally modify the same noun. The, the, the problem here is this equally. Um, I don't need to use a comma with different types of adjectives. There are three big black dogs. Uh, I, I, don't, I really don't need a comma. All right? It's not necessary. Um, okay. All right, there are three big black dogs. Okay, I can write this. There's no weird little green line under there. Microsoft Word telling me that this is an error. Why? I have, uh, clearly, I have three uh, different adjectives all in a row. Why do I need an adjective here and I don't need one here? Well, here's why. Uh, because I have a number, I have a size, I have color. These are totally different types of adjectives. In this sentence, unruly and disruptive, these are both uh, adjectives of opinion, you, what you consider to be unruly or disruptive. Uh, so they are equal in weight. I can say disruptive, unruly children. I can put them in either order. Um, they are both the same exact uh, type of adjective. They are, have this, adjectives, believe it or not, have a weight. And we do put them in a certain order. Um, usually this is not a problem because, of course, you can't say there are three, six dogs. That's just stupid. Um, you, can't, you can't say it's a big, small dog. There's only one size when you're describing something. There's only one color. It's a uh, okay, you can say it's it's a black and white dog, but you would you would never say it's a black white dog. That's that's incredibly silly as well. Um, uh, okay, basically, you only have to concern yourself with this rule usually when you are giving adjectives of opinion. Um, uh, and, okay. So, uh, let's try that, actually, just for giggles. Let's, uh, I would like you guys to try to make a sentence, your choice, subject and an object and whatever, using two adjectives which are opinion. 
uh, opinion, disruptive, unruly, uh, other things, ugly, beautiful, smelly, <laughs> uh, sensitive, okay, uh, anything you can, any adjective that you can think of to describe personality, sensitive, quiet, noisy, crazy, uh, uh, those are all opinions. What I think is crazy, you may not think is crazy. Um, try making a sentence with two, two uh, opinions, adjectives. Uh, Heidi, can you try that out? Could you do that? My neighbor is uh, noisy and noisy, mm -hmm. curious woman. A noisy, curious woman. Okay. Comma. Yes, you certainly do. Um, this is a very good example. This most definitely you would have would have to be written with a comma and of course a period. <laughs> I'm teaching punctuation. And I forgot the period. Perfect. All right, that is a perfect example. Of course, um, it is possible to add another adjective, in which case you would also add another comma. Um, general rule of thumb, there will be exceptions <coughs> where you are describing something and you may need um, four or five adjectives. But generally speaking, try not to use more than three adjectives because it gets too wordy and clunky and this doesn't work well. Um, Vu, you want to try giving me a sentence with two opinion adjectives? Nosy curious, unruly, disruptive. Vu? Okay. Can you hear me, teacher? Hi. All right. Hi. I have, I have a nice, strong laptop. A nice what? Comma strong. A comma. <laughs> strong. Strong. Um. Okay. Okay. That that could be a matter of opinion. All right. Strong is a. That's fine. Strong can sometimes mean, uh, all right, I guess that's opinion. What you think is strong, what I think is strong. Sometimes it could be considered to be a uh, condition in some cases, depending on how you use it. But in this case, it's fine. It's, it's opinion. So very good. Francisco, can you give me a sentence with uh, a couple of adjectives of opinion? Uh, my car is yelling and faster. Your car is what? Yelling. Green, green. <laughs> green. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and uh, and faster. You. Okay. Well. Okay. Here's the thing. I can't. All right. <laughs> all right. There's a couple problems here. The comma is not here. That's no, it isn't. Um, because you have way different ideas going on here. First of all, you have faster. You have a comparative. What are uh, you yes. comparing it faster than? What faster than? Uh, my neighbor car. Okay. All right, there you go. So you can't just write faster. You have to write faster than, or it has to be obvious. Whoops. Uh, faster than. All right, faster could be opinion, possibly, but of course green is not an opinion. Green is green. So, oops. And then here we go. I forgot the punctuation again. My neighbor's possessive. Uh, green is not an opinion. <laughs> uh, I have a good color. My, my car have a good color. Uh, okay. Maybe better. Yeah, there you go. Better and faster. Better and faster. Uh, 
than my neighbor's car. Um, here I would have to, okay, notice I'm using comparatives here. I would definitely need and. I cannot, I can't use uh, is better faster. <laughs> nope, doesn't work. I, no. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it won't work. I have to use a, uh, okay. Um, another reason you can't do this, you're using, um, you're using, uh, uh, even in the first sentence, all right? Uh, all right, the children are uh, unruly disruptive. That doesn't work, right? Uh, in this type of sentence where I don't, I don't have an object disruptive. Uh, I, I need to have and. This is a, a linking verb. All right. There is no object. Ne uh, psh, yes, object noun. Uh, I can't do this. The children are unruly, disruptive. I have to connect uh, I, um, adjectives with and. It's not possible. Uh, I can only do this in the first sentence here. Um, children is with the unruly, Jill was having problems. Okay, it's part of a prepositional phrase, actually, with the unruly disruptive children. Okay. Mm, I have a nice strong laptop. Okay, that's an object noun. All right. Um, mm. uh, okay, when we... Uh, is a noisy, no, nosy, curious woman. Okay, th actually, all right, this is okay. Ah, because we have woman, because we have an object, that's why. Because uh, we have a noun. The, the adjectives are working with a noun. When we just have <coughs> adjectives by themselves that are not actually, which actually are talking about the subject, uh, we need to have ant. There you go. Okay. Next, comma rule. Use a comma after a dependent clause that begins a sentence. Of course. Uh, you don't, however, e equally important, um, you don't use a comma before a dependent clause at the end of a sentence. So it depends. You can either one is grammatically correct and completely normal and okay. Uh, all right, but uh, if Mr. Wilson complains, comma, uh, we'll invite him for a snack. If you flip flops, if you switch the phrases, uh, we'll invite Mr. Wilson for a snack. If he complains, the here the dependent clause uh, goes second. Is the second clause? Um, if he complains, it's called a dependent clause because it doesn't, it can't exist by itself. It makes no sense to say if he complains, other than possibly in a dialogue referencing something else. But as a sentence structure, it makes no sense by itself. So it is called a dependent clause. Uh, okay. That is, uh, what kind of sentence is this? Do you know? Are both of these examples actually? Bonus points, grammar points. Who wants some grammar points? <laughs> plus, plus a conditioner. Uh, oh yeah, that that too. Well, <laughs> okay. Very good, Heidi. You you uh, you get points for that. That is a first conditional. Also, this is an example of a complex sentence. This is called a complex sentence made of one independent and one dependent clause. Okay, now compound sentence. Uh, use a comma before the conjunction in a compound sentence. However, if the two independent clauses are very short, you do not need the comma. This is complicated. Here again, we have a rule where you don't have to use the punctuation but if you choose to use the punctuation, it is always correct. Uh, okay, a compound sentence is made of two 
independent uh, clauses joined together. For example, we had a lot of fun, so I'll have another party soon. Uh, I'll have another party soon is a complete sentence. We had a lot of fun is a complete sentence. You are joining them with a connector here. So you need a comma and then your connective. The second example is a short, two very short clauses. She spoke and I took notes. Mm -hmm. She spoke and I took notes. This is also correct. Either way, with the comma or without the comma is perfectly correct. If you, my, my, my advice, if you happen to be taking an IELTS or a TOEFL test, then put the comma in, just to be safe. Uh, oh, here's one that I always get wrong. Okay. When quoting, put a comma to the left. <laughs> the left of a quotation mark that does not already have a period, question mark, or exclamation point. Uh-huh. Okay, to the left. So, in other words, looking at the example, here we go. Ariel said, when you are expressing what someone said, you are putting it in quotes. Arius, Ariel said, comma, <laughs> to the left of the quotation marks. Okay, then quotes, quotation marks, the two slashes on the top. I knew you would win the contest. Uh huh. Then notice the period inside and the quotation mark outside. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing because you have a period inside the quotation marks, that's what they're talking about inside outside rule. Um, because there's already some kind of punctuation in here, in the quotation. That's why the comma comes before. Just remember to the left. Uh, okay. I always forget this one, actually. Number 10, use a comma after a mild interjection, such as oh, or well. Oh, the test was not that difficult. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, what, how does this, if I decide to do, oh, the test was not that difficult. Okay, I, I read that. All right, what if I do this? Uh, Francisco, uh, re read this sentence. Oh, the test was not that difficult. Okay, very good. All right, now the original version. Uh, uh, uh. Whoops. And now this one, Francisco, one more time. Oh, the test is not that difficult. Oh, the test was not that difficult. Well, the test was not that difficult. Okay. It's uh, quite a bit different than with... You will see it either way, written. Obviously, a lot more emphasis and emotion and intonation when you see the exclamation point. Uh, okay. Next rule, use a comma after a noun of direct address. In other words, somebody's name. Cody, didn't I ask you to clean your room? <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you're writing... Uh, you know, clearly, most of the time, this would have uh, quotation marks because to show that somebody's speaking. Because, of course, you would only address a person by their name if you're speaking to them, not if you're writing. That really doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, uh, number 12, you please do this. I see, this is mistake is more and more common actually I see this all the time kind of bugs me use a comma after the greeting in a personal letter letter for example dear aunt Sheila comma um, 
whatever your doesn't matter what your greeting is doesn't even matter if it's formal or informal letter or email you should definitely have a comma after the greeting uh, also similarly after the closing of a letter again doesn't matter what you choose to use as a closing um, it should have a comma what do you choose to uh, end your letters with Heidi mm -hmm. what, what do you end a letter with uh, do you ever write a letter or email in English yeah no. they, they are something someone yeah okay that's that's your introduction the greeting that's called the greeting uh, how about the dearest, my teacher, like that. <laughs> dearest, oh, that's sweet. Dearest, okay, <laughs> lovely. All right, how do you end your letters or emails written in English? <laughs> the closing. This is the closing. Sincerely. Oh. Yeah. How do, what do yeah. you use for a cl your closing? Sincerely. Oh. You use sincerely. Okay. I never do. Uh, Vu. <laughs> Do you ever write emails in English? Ooh. Yes, yes, sometimes I write. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you close them? What do you use? Do you use sincerely uh, or do you use another? Most we got. Sometimes I use sincerely. Sincerely? Uh, most, most we got. Uh, we got. Regards. Best regards. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's my favorite. I like best regards. Better than sincerely. Okay. Very good. So it doesn't matter what you use. You need a comma. In the uh, beginner of uh, mail, uh -huh. you you use what? Ah, dear aunt. Yes. Dear uh, Aunt Sheila, um, I, do, I I am a little uncomfortable using dear if I'm writing a professional business uh, email. I you know I would probably write, for example, uh, like this: "Hello, Francisco," comma. But I would then, of course put my comma in, and then a uh, couple spaces and then start my letter. Hello Francisco or I might uh, yeah I I don't know why I don't like to use de dear even though it's considered to be professional and it's perfectly okay to do so. I just don't want Francisco to get the wrong idea. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, uh, use a comma to indicate where a pause is necessary in order to avoid confusion. Usually, and I agree with this extra advice here in the parentheses, if it is very, if your sentence is so confusing that you have to break it up into with many, par uh, many commas, then you probably should rewrite the sentence or break the sentence into two or possibly even three sentences. Uh, after Kelly, Jennifer gets a turn. Okay, fine. Basically, this is... Uh, okay. Maria came in in quite a hurry. Uh, okay, because you have in, in. All right, that's very true. That's useful. There will be times in English where you will have had, had, or... Um, uh, now, actually, with uh, verbs like had, had, he had had enough to eat, uh, you would never put a comma in between the verbs because, actually, it's an auxiliary ver and a verb and a main verb, and you're making a past perfect verb construction. You can't break it up with punctuation. Never put punctuation of any sort in the middle of a verb construction. That's... Uh, mm, well, unless, of course, you're putting an apostrophe to show a contraction with, uh, like, um, will not is won't, in which case, 
that is the one punctuation you can use. But never a comma, semicolon, colon, anything like that. Uh, okay, use a comma after uh, and a positive. And a positive is a noun or noun phrase that gives additional information about the noun that it follows. Uh huh. Okay. Wesley, my brother, is an optician. Um, all right. Um, okay. All right, fine. This is called an appositive. This is it functions like a relative clause, basically. Uh, you do not use a comma after restrictive, a positive, or a phrase that if you if you get rid of it, then um, it changes the whole meaning of the sentence. If I get rid of my brother, nothing changes. Actually, this is basically don't overthink this. This is basically the same exact rule as rule number one way back in the beginning. Um, no, not not one. Maybe f where was it? Uh, here. Uh, Use a comma to set off an interruption in the main thought of a sentence. All right, an interruption or any extra information. It doesn't matter. You set it off uh, with commas. Basically, the idea is if you can remove the information that does not affect the meaning of the sentence, then you need to have a comma. You need commas. Uh, okay, uh, always remember to use a comma to set off the abbreviation etc. I went to the store to get napkins, plates, cups, forks, comma, etc. <laughs> and so on, and other stuff. Uh, okay. Semicolon. Use a semicolon to join two independent clauses. In other words, okay, well, it says it. This eliminates the need for a comma and a conjunction. All right. Casey read a book. Then he did a book report. So instead of saying and, comma, and, then he did a book report, I can just use, uh, just use a semicolon. That's a dot and a comma. Dot over a comma, more or less. Uh, okay. Also, uh, we use a semicolon to separate items in a series when the things in the series contain commas. For example, here, um, city names and state names. We went on field trips to Topeka, Kansas, all right, because the construction Topeka, Kansas has a comma already. Where normal commas would be used for listing, we would use semicolon. Uh, okay. Uh, last of all, a colon. Use a colon between numerals indicating hours and minutes. Of course, it is 8.05. Uh, also, you can use a colon, two dots, one above the other, to introduce a list that appears after an independent clause. Um, okay. Uh, for example, and we have the word following to make it clear, you need the following items for class, colon, all right, and then a list, to introduce a list. Um, okay, uh, a volume number, a way to organize written material, uh, volume 17, page 245 is what this means. You will find information about Mexico in the encyclopedia. Volume 17, page 245. Um, and you can use it in a business letter, dear sir. All right, if you want to be quite formal, this is really how you should do it. Uh, Okay, that's, uh, unfortunately, we are definitely out of time. Uh, I definitely have to go, but uh, okay, at least we got through the basics, commas, periods, question marks, exclamations, and the colons. Uh, okay, thank you very much. See you again. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.